Good morning, good morning, good morning, beautiful people. Listen, good morning. It is an amazing day. We thank God for this beautiful day. I don't know about you, but I am just excited about God and what he's doing uh, in the lives of not only me, but through his people. And so y'all already know in the morning, on Sunday mornings, every Sunday morning from 9 to 10 p. at No, I'm sorry, 10 a.m., uh, you can join yours truly, Dr. Yo, uh, with Transparency, a uh, radio broadcast that is on Forever Rama Gospel Radio. And so, y'all know I like to start off with my little gospel music uh, in the morning. Uh, how many of you are just uh, blessed on this morning, just blessed uh, to be in the land of the living, just uh, blessed beyond measure. Listen, there's nobody like our Father. Are you hearing me? Nobody like our Father. Do y'all believe that? That there's nobody like our Father. Really, there's nobody like the Father. And so, uh, what can I say? What can I say? What can I say? On this beautiful morning, you're probably saying, what's going on with Dr. Yo? Can I tell you something about, um, I want to talk to you about saying yes to your call and yes to your purpose. Uh, God is truly amazing. We walk by faith and not by sight. Are you hearing me? Let me play our music for this morning. And the song is by Psalmist Rain. Uh, I don't own the rights to this music, but this song here is so befitting for what we're going to talk about this morning. So join in. We want to talk about saying really what our yes to our call really, really requires from us. Are you hearing me? I know obedience is number one, but y'all listen to this. And I want to talk about yes to our call. But you know, I have to get my worship on. Yes. You know, I remember Shekinah Glory, that's one of my favorite yeses, songs that they put out years ago. Yes, yes, yes. You may have to give up some things. When you say yes, it may cost you some things. No, not may cost. It will cost you some things. So really say yes to your call. But I want to ignite your fire this morning. Good morning. Good morning, sis. How are you? My topic for today is yes to the call. Yes to the call. What's up, my beautiful sis, Nigel? So I got to let you listen to song this raining. Yes. Woo, yes, yes, yes. It's something about that yes. Yes. That's what I want to talk about. Yes. Come on here. Not your way, but yes to the way of the Father. Yes. I'm going to get into transparency with Dr. Yo. <laughs> Baby. Come on here, we not selfish with the call. We not selfish with our call. Come on here, daddy. Come on, come on, come on. Thank you for tuning in today.
That forever rhema will build a legacy. Come on, yeah. Build a legacy. <laughs> yes. Yes. Come on here. Yes. I don't know about you, but I got a yes. I got a for sure enough yes. Jesus. My God today. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. God is truly amazing. He's truly amazing. How many of you have a real yes to the call that the Father has on your life? You got to surrender to the call. Hey, hey, hey! I don't know about you. But I have a real yes. Come on here. The song is almost over. It's almost over. Come on here. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Hey, hey, hey! Yes. 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 It's a beautiful day, people. It's a beautiful day. It's a beautiful day. Yes, it is. I'm talking about yes to the call. I promise you, if you hang on in there with me just a few more minutes, I got something I want to talk to you about. But I know that this song is so befitting. Because our yes is for real. To your will, your purpose, your will and your way. Come on here. Our yes means we have surrendered to the Father's will. For our life. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Woo! It's a beautiful song. Beautiful. Beautiful. I don't know about you, but I have surrendered to the will of the Father. Come on here. We can't play with our yeses. We can't play with our yes. Come on here. We cannot play with our yes to the call that God has on our life. It's not up for negotiation. We can't negotiate the call. The song is almost over. It's almost over. Hey, hey. <laughs> Woo, Lord have mercy Lord have mercy Lord have mercy Yes Yes God Yes to your will And yes to your way We shall obey Our yes Is yes Come on here Listen, I'm so blessed this morning. I, I had to play that song because it is so befitting to what I want to talk to you and share with you on transparency with Dr. Yo. This is where we uh, illuminate truth and erase deception. And can I tell you something? The truth of the matter is your yes to God 
will cost you some things. But the deceptive part of this truth is that the enemy will try to make you back down from your yes to God. Pitfalls, distractions will come your way to try to get you off course with your real yes to God, your call to God, whatever that may be. I don't know what your call is. We all have different things that God has called us to, to, to do. Are you hearing me? We've said yes to God about this purpose. Only you know what it is that God has called you to do. But can I tell you something? I want you to walk by faith and not by sight. I don't want you to be moved by what you see. What am I saying? There are distractions out there that can, can try to cloud your sight, your natural sight, to try to get you off course with what it is that you know God has called you to do, right? But if we're walking by faith and not by sight, our faith will overtake what we're looking at in the natural. Because our faith is what we have uh, 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 grabbed a hold to in our time of prayer and seeking God for strategic instructions for the call that he has placed on our lives. Remember, I, saying yes to our call will require some obedience, right? And, and, and when you think about the scripture that obedience is better than sacrifice, you got to obey God. Are you hearing me? Oh, we can give up a few things and say that we sacrifice it. And I get it. But our extreme obedience to God is like, I don't care what go on. I don't care what situation is happening. I'm going to obey God because it is God who I said yes to the call. And can I tell you something? I don't know about you, but it's time out for apologizing about what God has called you to do. No, you shouldn't say, oh, I'm sorry about this. I'm sorry about that. If God has called you to something, you have to be found doing it. Are you hearing me? So it may be you can't go to certain things. You may not be able to attend everything. Are you hearing me? God may have you on another assignment because you are responsible and I am responsible to fulfilling our yes to what we say God has called us to. Yesterday was amazing. I was hanging out with my little sister. Uh, she's like a giant over me. Uh, you know, she's real tall. Uh, Nija and we were hanging out and we we been discussing some things that you know we're going to collaborate with in business that I'm excited about and so to see God bring these things together are you hearing me you know you have a vision a, a backer say write the vision and make it plain uh, you understand what I'm saying you got to write the vision not and, and make it plain, but you also got to execute the vision that God has given you. Are you hearing me in reference to your call? I call them secret place strategies, right? I don't move in my next move without consulting God. I don't know about you, and I know you do the same thing because if you walking by faith and not by sight, baby, you got to go into the throne room and talk to the father, you know, and be in dialogue with daddy about what it is uh, you need to do to execute this plan or this call that he has on your life, right? Every call ha ha requires a plan of action, right? You just can't talk about the call. You got to be about the call, meaning you have to put that in action. Faith without works is dead. Right? So we can walk by faith and not by sight. But if we don't put the, you know, the works together, 
You understand what I'm saying? And do what it is that the Father is called and requiring us to do in the, in the call. It's just a call without purpose. I tell people all the time, you, you, you can't allow anything to, to have you muzzled. If you look at an ox, an ox, they have this thing that you put over the, the mouth of an ox to, to, to restrain it down. I want to use that analogy in place of you and your purpose, right? If you are muzzled, that means you are restricted and you are strained. You restrain. Are you hearing me? But if you're unmuzzled, meaning the restraints are off, you're not muzzled from your purpose. Are you hearing me? So when you say yes to the call that God has on your life, you can't say yes to God and then turn around and muzzle and restrain your purpose. Who am I talking to this morning? I'm not preaching this morning. I'm just excited because, you know, when God does a thing, we, we want to get ahead of God's timing, right? We can't get ahead of God's timing, right? His timing is strategic in everything that we're doing when it comes to the call that he has predestined for our life. Are you hearing me? Hello, somebody. Now, it's that kind of morning. Hello, somebody means are you listening to what I'm trying to tell you? Are you hearing me? Strategic planning is everything when you're saying yes to the call right? But you got to be able to follow the instructions of the Father, even if you, you, you know, what, what, how, how I'm going to do, don't worry about how you're going to do it. Don't worry about how you're going to get to, to this point, to that point, right? If God has called you and you have said yes to whatever it is that God is, the calling that's on your life, whatever he's called you to. For example, say for instance, you may have a passion, right, for working with children, right? And you decide that, okay, I I'm so passionate about children, I'm going to get a daycare, right? And you're like, well, I can't afford the daycare. I can't afford the building. But I have a passion for it, right? <clears throat> now, strategic plan, you go to the Father and you say, Lord, I have this passion. Habakkuk, I'm writing this vision. I'm making it plain. In year one, I'm going to do this. In year two, I'm going to do this. You know, but you putting this before the Lord, right? Because you're not making plans without the Father. You understand what I'm saying? You saying yes to the call. We all have different calls. Are you hearing me? So you may so you may want a building, but in 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 the process of it. He may start you with a home daycare, right? With children, right? You get your little licenses and all of that. You may start out with a home daycare, right? And then as time go in the building processes and phases, right? You may go and, and you know, you put it before the Lord and then he opened the door. And you may get a small facility, right? That's manageable, right? And then next thing you know, he, he puts you into a bigger facility. The next thing you know, he has expanded to you where you have multiple daycares. Right? I'm just saying. Right? What is your past? You may start out with counseling. You may have one client. Right? And that's your passion. That's what he called to. You working with people. You counseling with people. You are helping people on self -service. That's your passion. Are you hearing me? And what happens next? You go from one client, you may end up with two, three, and next thing you know, it's built up to this just blessed practice for your counseling, right? I'm just saying, that's in the marketplace. Let's bring it into the call, right, of your call uh, as, as a minister of the gospel. Let me use that. I'm a minister of the gospel, right? <laughs> I didn't ask to come to this. As a matter of fact, it's, I, I wanted to run smooth up out of this calling. You understand what I'm saying? Because I know that it was going to require so much to walk in this call. Because you got to live 
that a certain way. You got to, you know what I'm saying? People watching your life. You can't say, well, do as I say. You understand what I'm saying? Because you, you yourself got to practice what you preaching. You got to live what you're preaching. You got to live what you're teaching. Are you, are you hearing me? Hello, somebody. Because that's the call that you're called to. I'm just using that as my own example, right? Well, how am I able to take this call as a minister of the gospel, right? Yes, I can use it in the kingdom with other believers, right? But how can I take this call into the marketplace and be effective as well, right? What about the fruit of the spirit? A little love, a little, some, some kindness and gentleness and, you know, some characteristics of, the, of, of Jesus Christ, right? You got to have some discipline. Are you hearing me? Because people are not in, in the marketplace. They watching you. You ain't got to say, you know, preacher. You ain't got to say, you know, I'm a minister of the gospel. I preach the gospel, this, that, and other. No, you ain't got to do all that, right? What's some strategic planning in the marketplace, right? You go, he that win his souls going to be wise with. So you got to ask the father, all right, daddy, how I need to go about this? Well, number one, you got to present your, your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto the Father. That's your reasonable service, right? Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? So that means when I go in the marketplace, right? And I done said yes to the call, how am I going to act in the marketplace, right? Am I going to get caught up? In the marketplace, gossip? Am I going to be disrespectful to my superiors or even my colleagues in the marketplace? I'm just saying. I I'm telling you different things, different avenues, even in your call as a preacher of the gospel. Right? You're just not called. Good morning. Good morning. You're just not called, right, in, in, in the church. It goes everywhere with you. Are you hearing me? It goes in the church and it goes out the church, right? That's my call. So how am I acting outside of the four walls since I have truly said yes to this call that is upon my life? I'm not the only one. I'm talking this morning on transparency about yes to the call. Right? The process. Walking through it. How we should act. How we should conduct ourselves. Saying yes to the call. Whether it's in the marketplace. Right? You want clients. Right? If you're an entrepreneur. That's the big thing going. Shout out to all the entrepreneurs. Shout out. But how are you saying yes to the call even out there when you are going out there as an entrepreneur, how are you representing what you said yes to the call to God? How am I representing how I said yes to the call to the Father? That don't just apply with me talking to the people that I labor with in the gospel. No, that applies to how I act in the marketplace, whether it's on a secular job or whether it's in entrepreneurship. We're going to come across all types of people from all walks of life, different religions, different nationalities, right? But your yes to your call, how do you respond when you're put in these different... How do I respond with my yes to the call? How do I respond in these different entities, these different places that, that God has given me access to? Are you hearing me? And can I tell you something else? What you're saying yes to the call and being obedient to the Father, right? God will position you and he will provide everything that you need. You don't have to compromise your yes. I don't have to compromise my yes to the call. 
We don't have to we don't have to compromise. We said yes to God, so we are obligated. Are you hearing me? Hello, somebody. We are obligated to fulfill our yes that we said. Yes, Lord, whatever, whatever your will is, whatever your way is, whatever you require of me, I say yes. You understand me? Can I tell you something? I know this is a hard pill to swallow for some of us with our real yes to our call. Sometimes it's going to require separation. Anything that's going to be a distraction or draw you out of character to the call. Because remember, you're trying to impact lives for change, right? You and I. By no means in the call should we be toxic ourselves. Are you hearing? That go Hello, somebody. I, I be the first to say I'm included, right? Because I don't want to be on transparency talking about y'all, 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 right? But on transparency, I never talk about Dr. Yo, right? Because that's the problem. We say yes to the call, right? But we can't take the call to justify our behavior that don't represent the call that we said yes to God. Remember, the call is not about you and I. It's about what he called us to and we surrendered to the will of the Father and we said yes. That's what I'm talking about this morning. I'm talking about yes to, yes to the call. Yes to the call. Yes to the call. That means not my will, Father, but ever, whatever you're requiring of me. You understand what I'm saying? Nothing. Hear me. It's another hard pill to swallow. Nothing should separate you from the love of God and the call. You can't answer the call without the love. Oh, I think that went over some heads. Right? Hello, lights. Right? Ain't no camera. Ain't no action. This goes for me as well. Yes to the call is what we're talking about. We got to give up some things. He's requiring some things of us. But most of all, in the call, we should have love. We should have compassion, right? You're going to have some long suffering. Oh, yeah, yeah. You, you think that you're not going to suffer for the call? Who, who told you and me that we will never suffer for the call? I'm reminded when Jesus died for all mankind. Are you hearing me? He suffered. He took lashes, whip, you know, he took all of that. He was even pierced for his yes to the Father. Right? He came down in human form so he can identify with us. Are you hearing me? So he know what it is to suffer because he suffered all the way to the cross for you and me. So do you think that our yes to the call is not going to come with suffering. Are you hearing me? Jesus did. Because I don't think when he went to the cross, he didn't feel pain and agony or betrayal. The very people that he was laying his life down for are the ones who were saying crucify him. So, if Jesus suffered for the call to, to, so that we can have a right to choose eternal life. Are you hearing me? 
Then what about us? In our call. So we want to, we can't portray that the call is just all peachy cream. Because it's not. I don't, see, that's a deception. That's why I love to show transparency. Because it illuminates true, right? And it erases, it erases or exposes deception. Because the deceptive thing is for us to believe that we will never suffer for the call. That's a lie. But can I tell you something? Weeping may endure for a night. Oh, my God. But joy is coming in the morning. All right? We're going to suffer with him, but we can reign with him. Are you hearing me? He'll also be Jehovah Shalom. He will give us the peace that surpasses all understanding that will guard our heart and mind. The reason why I started off with the scripture of walking by faith and not by sight, because we may see some things that would kind of discourage us from saying, from, from like, you know what? Ever since I said yes to this call, it seemed like all hell has broken out. That's a good place to be in. Because see, at the end of a thing, right? God will get the glory because you have persevered. You have triumphed and the Father have given you the victory. Because you were saying, okay, I said yes to this call. I don't care what happened. I may bend a little bit. I may get worn down a little bit, but I won't break. You understand what I'm saying? I may bend, I may bow, not to the circumstances, but the bow of the weight of the call in the suffering time. Because in the way you're down, it make you bow. But in your bowing, guess who you bowing to? You're bowing to the Father and saying, you know what? You called me to this. I said yes to this. I'm going to persevere through this. And I know at the end of the thing, you're going to give me victory. I'm going to walk out in a victorious place because I have answered and I have given you a real, here's the key, a real yes. Now, oh, I just say yes to the call. Oh. I just say yes. Oh, oh yes, yes. Yeah, I did answer my call. And then when the suffering come, you start running from the call. I didn't sign up for this. Y'all, come on. Y'all, y'all gonna tell me, or y'all gonna lie to me this morning and sit up and say, you ain't say, Lord, what in the world? When I said yes to this call, oh my God, what in the world is going on? Now, you ain't second-guessing that he called you to it. But when the whirlwind happened, you're saying like, oh, my God. What have I said yes to? But can I tell you something? When you keep God first, you know how they say tunnel vision? You know, people be zoned in on one thing. Let me tell you what they need to do. Be zoned in on the Father. And what he called you to do to make an impact. You got to understand this. We're not called to everybody. Do we want to impact a lot of people for change? Yes. But I tell people all the time, hello somebody. Get the audience that God has placed before you to make an impact. That's why we got so many people out here. We're different. You understand what I'm saying? But if you're a believer and you love God, we all have the same purpose. We love God and we want to make an impactful change in somebody's life. Who you can reach, I may not can reach. And who I can reach, you may not can reach. But at the end of the day, they're being reached because of the call, all glory, Listen, that's why I say keep God first. It goes back to the Father. 
right? Because we said yes to God. We're not selfish, right? We're not selfish with this call. We're not selfish. This call ain't about us. Us saying yes ain't got nothing to do with who we are, what kind of degrees. I got how many degrees? All the way up to a PhD, a earned PhD and doctorate. I have an honorary doctorate in humanitarian. But my other degrees, I sit in the class and earn them. Are you hearing me? Right? I have all different types of certification. Right? Even in the marketplace. Are you hearing me? Right? How can I take that and be impactful for somebody else to come up and make a difference? Right? Your audience that you're called to, they want it. They hungry. But the audience that you're not called to, right? Let it be. You're not going to reach everybody. But be impactful to those that are receiving what the call is and do it in love for a change. It's not about us. I've decided that in this moment, I'm going to do everything that I can with God's help to fulfill the call and protect my peace. Right? You got to get to a point that there's some non-negotiables. And the non-negotiables should be what the Father has called me to do, no situation and nobody is going to stand in the way of me doing what God has called me to do. You got to stand on that boldly. We can't be yo-yos, up and down, up and down, up and down. Listen, I did that, honey. Been there, done that. One minute I'm fired up. The next minute something happened, take me out of focus. Let me tell you something. You got to get to a point of non-negotiables. I'm, I'm at, and I've been there for quite some time, non-negotiables and things that are distracted from purpose. And some people may say, ooh, that's, that's a hard thing. You're heartless and this and that and other. No, you're not heartless. You're focused. It's a difference between you not caring and it's a difference between you being focused. Are you hearing me? So you got to be to a point that you are driven and you on what God has called you to do because you're trying to impact the lives of somebody else other than yourself. Are you hearing me? I look at our kids today. It takes a whole village to raise them. If you've done your part, don't beat yourself up. Right? Don't beat yourself up. You may not can reach them at that moment because they may be in rebellion states. But God can use somebody else in their call, are you hearing me, to reach them. Right? Parents, free yourself. Free yourself. Free yourself. Are you hearing me? I'm telling you. Because let me tell you something about life. It's what you make of it. And the graveyard, I want to talk about that, is full of people who had a call and a purpose. And they took the call and the purpose to the grave because they got distracted and couldn't focus on what it is that the Father called them to do. Right? Right? The Bible says, cast your cares upon him for he cares. So that means if you cast your cares upon him, you stay focused on what he called you to do. He will take care of the cares in your life. That's why you got to walk by faith. You may not see it right now because it may look like a whirlwind. But if you walk by faith, and not by what you see. 
and keep focused and keep trusting God, you will see some things manifest. But you have to stay. You and I have to stay in our position. Are you hearing me? If you lost a job, right? I will talk about this transparency. We talk about life, life, circumstances, life, things that can happen to get you off course with your yes to the call, right? And you've been praying. You done wrote the vision down to be an entrepreneur, right? They start downsizing at the job. You like, what in the world am I going to do? And this and that and other. Oh, my God. Woo. Oh, my God. Well, the truth of the matter is you prayed and you asked God to open the door for you to do something, right? But deception of it is you looking at, okay, it's downsized. I'm not going to have no job. Or I've gotten laid off. You understand what I'm saying? So you lose sight. Because you know you, you're going to suffer. You're going to suffer in this, in this purpose. Are you hearing me? So you lose sight. Instead of keeping focus and saying, you know what, God? You gave me a plan. I'm going to trust you with it. Here it is. I lay it, on, I, 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 I lay it out here at the altar. And I'm going to walk by faith in it to see it come to pass. Because God could have you in a place to learn some things, to, to help in the planning or the process of the call, right? I talked about the ministry call, right? But we have other calls that we're called to, right? Things that we're called to do, purpose. Don't allow anything to muzzle your purpose, right? God gave you a purpose, even in the marketplace, even as an entrepreneur, right? You, you got dreams. You got goals. You got to stay focused. Are you hearing me? It's too many times, and I've been guilty of it too, I'll let things just distract, distract, distract. But you have to come to a point that you say no. And you have to mean it. And if it costs you some things, you have to accept the price that has to be paid. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? Yeah, you got to accept. I'm just, I'm just talking. This is your girl, Dr. Yo. I'm just telling you today. Is a blessed day. I'm telling you. God has. He, he, he just keep wowing me. He just keep wowing me. You know. And, and, and the thing of the matter. Is that it doesn't matter. You have to get to a point that no matter what you're facing. You call. That you don't retreat. You don't draw back. We some soldiers. We, we, we Baby we out there. We some soldiers. We are solid. Soldiers get wounded in battle, but guess what? Soldiers also heal. Are you hearing me? So even in the process, you may get wounded in the call. Are you going to just say, I retreat, I give up, I'm not going to do it, it's too painful? Or are you going to say, wait a minute. God has a plan for my life. And I've said yes. Am I going to back up now? Or am I going to keep moving forward? So you got to have them. And if you're talking to yourself, that, that ain't crazy. You, you, you know, like, sometimes you got to say, hold oh, up, wait a minute, this ain't going to work. I know what God showed me. It may not be happening right now at this moment in the physical, but I done grabbed a hold of this. I receive it, and I believe it. I'm walking by my faith, not by what I'm seeing, because what I'm seeing may not line up with what you believe in. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? I I'm just talking this morning, you girl. Let me tell y'all something. Your girl, I, I, I'm telling you, God is truly, truly amazing. I'm excited 
about you. I'm excited about what God has called you to. I'm excited about your purpose. I'm excited about how God is elevating and moving you in your life purpose. We all have a purpose. Listen, Dr. You ain't the only one got no purpose. Well, that that's 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 deception. That's deception at its finest. But illuminating truth, we all got purpose. It's just if we choose to walk in it. If we choose to walk in it. I tell I tell my grand my oldest granddaughter, I said, baby, you got purpose. You walk in your purpose. You're going to impact the lives of many young people. Walk in it. Walk in it. And we have to be a people. I, I'm telling you, God is so amazing. One, one of my nieces, it just blessed me. I, I was going to check on something business-wise on yesterday. And she texts me and she said, Auntie, she said, can you talk? And I just went on and I just called her, right? And I was in the car and I said, well, I'm on my way somewhere. I said, but I said, what's up? What you got going on? And she said, Auntie, I started a, a nonprofit organization. And she said, uh, I'm going to be working uh, with youth, uh, you know, like high school, uh, high schoolers. And I said, wow. I said, that's, that's awesome. She said, I want to ask you a question. I said, what? I said, come on, talk to me. I'm in the car. She said, will you be a mentor? She said, I really admire you and respect what you do. I said, wow, this is my niece. She's staying in a whole nother state. That was an honor to me. Why? Because I have a program that's called the Gangs Program. Greatness, accountability, never give up, successful outcome. And this program was designed because I have two sons, and I, if you heard this story before, you know, they're, they're ex-gang members, right? And uh, that, that's our story, right? And so they both went to prison, right? Went to prison. And God gave me the vision to be impactful to young people. So I started going to court with other young people prior to not knowing that that was going to fall in my lap with my own children. Uh, even before the organization uh, of Break Free Release Ministries International, that was what, that's one of the strongest components. Because I want these young people to know you do not have to be a statistic, right? You ain't got to be no rough rider to be successful. You don't have to do that. You understand what I'm saying? And so with God doing that, with her calling me, I said, wow. I said, go to the website. I want you to look at something. Are you hearing me? Do you know God can, his strategic planning, you don't know how he's going to orchestrate different things, but he orchestrates them well. Because even in it, it's a lot of times, well, let me talk about my own situation. A lot of times when you, or in that situation, people have fear. They don't want to step in those arenas where it's involved with gangs or anything like that, right? And I don't blame them because it's dangerous. 
I don't blame anybody. You understand what I'm saying? But I can tell you about the power of prayer. Are you hearing me? I can tell you about the power of prayer. And it works. And so for my niece to want to collaborate together. That's why I told you, we, you have to work together. It, you know, she have a passion for you. I have a passion for youth in a different capacity. Are you hearing me? Due to life circumstances in my own life. That's why y'all see me post the pictures of my son's uh, uh, certificates and, and things like that. And the accomplishments and stuff like that. You know, and I have one son. He's currently, you know, in, in prison right now. Because when you're a felon, you cannot pack a gun, right? Outside, in your car, right? Can't do that. So that's what he's in prison for. But can I tell you something? He's accomplished certifications. He's got his managed food management certificate. He, he, he accomplished all this in the prison, right? Then my younger son, he's out, right? He's gotten his CDL license, right? But can I tell you something? What my oldest son, he would say, Mama, it's some things reminding me. I, I met somebody in prison. They were talking about God. We was talking about God and, and you know, and uh, being an example and stuff like that. And I was like, wow. Then my younger son, he was like, Mom, you know, I met somebody and we be talking about the Bible and pray together and all that type of stuff, you know. So we planted the seed. They may go out there and bump their head. Right? But God will always use somebody that can still reach them and talk to them. And it even bring them back to saying, Mama, you know, a daddy. Because my husband, he is in our son's life. He has, that. that's my ride to life partner, my husband. You understand what I'm saying? Uh, it's amazing. Uh, he has been through the whole process with our boys, even up until now. You understand what I'm saying? So I'm grateful. But it was such an honor for me to, uh, for my niece to even reach out to me to be a part of what she's doing. And it's a collaboration, not because she's my niece, but because she's a woman, right? Collaborating. Women can work together. Are you hearing me? So what I'm trying to tell you, we, we, we all can work together. We all have a, a different calls and purposes, but we can come together and do things and stuff like that and be impactful. It, I could have said, well, now I don't want to do it, you know, you know, because I got this going on and, you know, I blah, blah, blah. Come on, how selfish can you be? For somebody to watch your life and want you to be a part and see what you're doing in the community. Let me tell you something else. A lot of stuff that I'm doing in the community right now, I'm not even posting on Facebook. I'm not. Right? Because I'm not trying to prove. I'm just trying to be about my father's business. That there are going to be some times that I will post some things. Right? Because I'm a non I have a nonprofit organization. And wonderful people that collaborate and work with me in Break Free to serve the community. Are you hearing me? Because I can't do it by myself. I have a team of people that we work together and we get it done. Right? So I'm excited. And if you want to visit the website, you can visit uh, www.bfrmi.org, which stands for Break Re Free Release Ministries International.org, and I'm excited about it. Join me every Sunday morning on Rama Gospel Re uh, Forever Rama Gospel Radio with Transparency with Dr. Yo, and you can also join me on on uh, Forever Rama Television Network. With my own TV, television, talk show, Break Free TV. 
And I'm excited about it. God is doing a new thing uh, with, with television. He's doing a new thing with radio. And I'm excited about it. I'm excited about new endeavors and partnerships and things in the community because we do it better together. But can I tell you something? Don't allow anything to distract you. Period. No toxicity, right? Mary J. Lablage had a song saying no more drama, right? You got to tell yourself no more drama because you have a call on your life that you have yes, said yes to God, right? And you cannot effectively impact for change, you and I, if we are full of drama in the call. Are you hearing me? So listen, if doors shut, God has doors open. Just walk by faith and not by sight and be prepared to walk into that place because God is amazing. He's amazing. He's amazing. And I don't know what to tell you, but I love you. I thank God for your life. I thank God for your purpose. And remember, like I say, you can and you can go and subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can go on the network as well. You can do all of that. And I am thankful, 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 thankful. Are you hearing me? You can go listen on the radio at Live 365. You can also go on the Roku channel to Forever Rama Television Network and find the broadcast for Break Free TV. You can find all of that, or you can join me live on Facebook Live from 9 to 10 a.m. every Sunday morning. Uh, those are all the avenues, and I have a podcast that I'm starting to work back on, the Unmuzzled with Purpose podcast, and I'm excited about that. And you probably going to be, some of you going to be some guests on the podcast as well as the radio station and TV network. Listen, I love you guys, and remember this. On Transparency with Dr. Yo, this is where we do what? We eliminate truth and we erase deception. All right? Until next time, hello, somebody. Don't allow anything to muzzle your God-given purpose. Have a great, good, happy, fruitful, blessed day. Bye-bye. Until next time.